Today, we're going to solve proportions. If a proportion involves a variable, you can use cross products to solve the proportion. For example, solve for the value of x in the equation x over 5 is equal to 10 over 13. By using cross products, x times 13 is 13x is equal to 5 times 10 is equal to 50. Doing the inverse operation, we need to divide both sides by 13. 13 divided by 13 is 1, so we have 1x is equal to 50 over 13. Changing this into mixed number, 13 can go into 50 3 times. 3 times 13 is 39, so this means we have a leftover of 11. So 50 over 13 is the same thing as 3 and 11 thirteenths. Let's have example number 2. Josh finished 24 math problems in one hour. At that rate, how many hours will it take him to complete 72 problems? So in this problem, we need to set up first equation comparing the number of problems over the time. So the first fraction is 24 math problems in one hour. That is equal to how many hours will it take him to complete 72 problems? There's 72 problems, so that will be the numerator. And we are asked to find the time, so that will be x. By cross products, 24 times x is 24x. 72 times 1 is 72. So now we have 24x equals 72. The next step is to divide both sides by 24. This means that x is equal to 3. So Josh will take 3 hours to complete 72 problems. Figuring this out mentally, we know that 24 math problems takes an hour. And there's 3 24s in 72. So it makes sense for Josh to finish these 72 problems in 3 hours. Now it's your turn to solve each proportion. Give it a try and play the video whenever you're ready for the solutions. Now let's go over the solutions to these six problems. For the first question, negative 3 over x is equal to 2 over 8. The same thing, we can use cross products. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24 is equal to 2 times x is 2x. Solving for x by itself, we need to do the inverse operation and this is by dividing both sides by 2. So negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12 and 2x divided by 2 is 1x. So x value is equal to negative 12. Question number 2. x over 21 is equal to 3 over 63. By cross products, x times 63 is 63x. 3 times 21 is 63. Now we will divide both sides by 63. So left side is just x. And right side, 63 divided by 63 is 1. So x is equal to 1. Question number 3. 9 over y plus 1 is equal to 18 over 54. Before I do cross products, I will reduce first the fraction 18 over 54 as equal to 1 third. I can divide 18 and 54 by 18. It makes it a lot easier in solving this equation. So now I will multiply 9 times 3, which is 27, is equal to y plus 1 times 1 is the same thing as 1y plus 1. Now we need to subtract 1 to both sides of the equation. 27 minus 1 is 26, 
and right side 1 minus 1 is 0 so y is equal to 26 question number 4 is a tricky question doing cross products 1.5 times x is 1.5x is equal to 12 times x is equal to 12x. We need to isolate the variable on one side. So in this case, I will subtract 1.5x to both left and right. 1.5x minus 1.5x is 0x or simply 0. And the right side, 12 minus 1.5 is 10.5x. Now we need to divide both sides by 10.5. 0 divided by any number is 0 is equal to 10.5 divided by 10.5 is 1, so we have x is equal to 0. However, you're not allowed to have a 0 denominator, so question number 4 has no solution. Question number 5. 3 plus y over 4 is equal to negative y over 8. By cross products, we need to multiply 8 by 3 plus y. For the right side, 4 times negative y is negative 4y. Now we need to do distributive property. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times y is 8y is equal to negative 4y. Now I will isolate the variable y's on the right side. The inverse of plus 8y is minus 8y. So left side is 24. 8y and negative 8y is 0. It's equal to negative 4y minus 8y is negative 12y. Now we divide both sides by negative 12. 24 divided by negative 12 is negative 2. And the right side is just y. So y value is equal to negative 2. Question number 6. a minus 18 over 12 is equal to 15 over 3. For the right side, 15 over 3. This can be reduced as 5 or 5 over 1. So now we can do cross products. We will multiply a minus 18 times 1. So that is a minus 18. Next, we need to multiply 12 times 5, and that is 60. Solving for a, we need to add 18 to both sides. Negative 18 plus 18 is 0, so left side is a, and the right side, 60 plus 18 is 78. So the a value is equal to 78. A tourist traveled to Dubai, UAE to see the iconic landmark Burj Khalifa, originally named Burj Dubai. The six-foot tourist is standing next to the building. The tourist is casting a shadow 1.5 feet in length, while the building is casting a shadow of 680.5 feet. How tall is Burj Khalifa? Give it a try and play the video whenever you're ready for the solutions. Here's the detailed solution to this problem. First, we will set up ratio and proportion, comparing the height and shadow of the person and the building. In this problem, the 6-foot tourist is casting a shadow of 1.5 feet. So that is 6 feet over 1.5 feet. On the other hand, the building is casting a shadow of 680.5 feet, which is our denominator. And we're solving for the height, so x is missing. So the equation that we have is 6 feet over 1.5 feet is equal to x over 680.5. By cross multiplication, we multiply 1.5 by x, so we have 1.5x, and we also multiply 6 times 680.5. So the new equation now is 1.5x is equal to 4083. Doing the inverse operations, we need to divide both sides by 1.5. 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1, so we have 1x. And dividing 4,083 by 1.5, the answer is 2,722 feet. This is the actual height of Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Here's our second solution. 
For solution number 2, let's compare the height 6 and the shadow 1.5 feet in length. Since the height of the person is 4 times its shadow, the same pattern must happen for the building as well. To find the height of the building, we're simply multiplying the shadow 680.5 by 4. So 680.5 times 4 is equal to 2,722 feet, which is the height of the building Burj Khalifa. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing to my channel at Celso Academy.